Yeah, th that was a, that was a lot of errors. Okay, um, I mean, but 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 it w it was good for us to know and understand because you know because otherwise it, it can trip you sometimes. Okay, so what we've done here, let's see. This should work because now we are creating um, charge account modification object, calling it number set. This is basically our old program. We are now in our constructor. We are providing it a file name. If it doesn't find the file, it's going to complain and say it doesn't find the file. It can't, it can't find the file. And so this is our file here. We can we will change the content to see if it works. Let's also create another method that's going to basically display all the elements of the all the elements of the of the file. So we can we can we can prove that okay, we're actually reading from the file. So in our class, let's quickly do that. So let's create an instance method. It's going to be a public method. It's not really going to return anything. It's basically going to just um, print out. Uh, actually, yeah, it's going to just print out the uh, each of the elements in an in an array. Um, should we actually do that? Let's see. Actually, what we should do is let's just return the array. Let's return the array, and let's return the array and then print out the elements from them in the in the main method. And so let's create a public method that's going to re it's going to return it's an instance method right we don't have the keyword static it's going to return basically our charge account numbers array which is basically an integer array and so we have to set the return type to, to be an integer array and so integer it's going to the return type is going to be an integer array and let's call this method get charge account um, array let's do that Get charge account array, and let's see if this if this if this method is going to accept any argument. Um, no. Um, all all that this method is going to do is it's going to return the charge account numbers array here. So it's going to return charge account numbers, and so that's it for this method. Once we call it get charge account um, array charge accounts, let's make it charge accounts array. It's going to just return the charge account numbers array. And in our let's compile this and refine in our program that's testing the class. Let's basically write okay a method that's going to accept an array and basically display the content of that array. Okay, so I'm going to create it outside the main method. Okay, in our class. Uh, okay, outside the main method, and it's going to be a public static, just the regular method, public static. Now this method is going to return, let's see. This method is going to return, should we make it, let's make it print, let's make it print out uh, each of the um, items in array, right? So public static um, void, it's not going to return anything. So we said we said the return type to void, public static void, and let's call it print array, or let's say print charge account numbers, charge account numbers or let's just call it print elements so since this array can take in any array so since this method can take in any array and print elements in there so let's call it print array element okay so once someone calls this method it's going to need the array okay so that it can print the array element from it right and so let's define a parameter which a parameter okay it's going to it's going to accept in um, an integer array okay so I'm going to define an integer array and let's call it uh, array right and so now what we want to do is we want to loop through the array that that's going to be given to us and print out each, each element in there so I'm going to create a for loop in the method and then I'm going to initialize a variable integer index index is going to represent this each slot of the array set it to zero and as long as index is less than the array's length remember the first item in an array has an index of zero the last item in an array has an index of one less than the length of the array and so if we are checking to make sure that the index is always less than the length of the array then we know that that index is valid so that's what we are doing here, making sure in, in, initializing the index is zero, 
and then making sure it's always less than the length of the array. If we do that, then we know that that index is, is valid. And so as long as the index is length, less than the length of the array, we have the array, the, the parameter here. So array.length. We know that each array has a public field called length that returns the, uh, um, uh, yeah, basically, oh, sorry, that doesn't return. It's not a method. It's a public field. It's like a variable public field that stores the length of the array. Okay. And so if the index is less than the array.length, do what's in the loop and, and before you come back up to check to see if index is less than the array array's length add one to index you can do that with index plus plus and so we are, we are starting index with zero okay increasing it by one each time making sure that it's a valid index by making sure it's less than the array's length because the last index in or basically the last item in an array has an index one less than the length of the array okay and so and we are using index to represent each slot in the array, basically. And so if that's the case, then what we want to do is each time, st starting from zero all the way to the last, we start from the first element all the way to the last element, pre pretty much. We want to basically print it out, right? And so let's say, let's just system.out.print, print ln. Let's print out basically the array at position index because index is going to increase from zero you know basically index is going to be is going to keep track of what particular ind index we want to print we're adding one to it just making sure and making sure that the index is always a valid index all right and so this is basically going to print out the array that we provide to it i think it should work let's just compile this and see okay looks good all right and so right once we create the object Right. Once we create the uh, object here, what we, what I want to do is we create these variables um, before. Well, normally when we're writing our program, it shouldn't say that, right? But this is just for testing purposes. This here is just for testing purposes to see the element in the in the file. And so what we what we uh, what, or the basically the lines in the file to see the lines in the file. So what I want to do is once we create the object, give it the file. It's going to already have the array populated with the lines in the file so i i can after, after i declare these variables i can basically call print array element right which is a method right and i can pass in um let's see i can pass in an array and we know that we have a method in here called called where is it we created it called get charge account array, right? We know we have that, and basically that returns that charge account numbers array, right? And so let's co copy that. And over here, I'm printing the array element, but it needs an array. And we know this get get charge account array method, right? But we need to use the name of the object, okay? We use, we use, use the name of the object. So we call, the name of the object is number set. So number set dot get charge account array we know this method is going to return the charge account numbers array and once we have the charge account numbers array here this particular method we defined in our, our our program okay is going to display the element in the charge account numbers array run this make sure compile this make sure it's everything is fine and it's, everything is good all right so this is just to help us see the elements in your array Let's try that. We use it. We use a Jobson pane, and so let's try that and see where we are. Um, so we'll compile this and compile this. Okay, now let's run it and let's see what happens. Oops, we have uh, an error. Let's see. Okay, it's it's okay. So it says file not found exception. So that means we couldn't find the find the file. Let's see. What did I name the file as? As charge accounts. Charge accounts. Look, txt. Hmm. Let's just make sure um, the extension. Let's let's make sure the extension is correct. Let's just open the folder to desktop. Okay, chapter seven. Oh, it's probably because it's I don't know. Let, let's let's just see. 
Okay, so charge account modification. We have the charge account. Let me just quickly check the extension. Command Command I on Mac. And the extension is the TXT. Okay, so let me just copy this. Make sure that I have it correctly in the program. Okay, I closed it. Oh, I have it here. No, I, do, I don't. <laughs> Let's just. I'll quickly open it again. I'm sorry. Text up. And let's open this. Okay, we have it here. So I don't know why it, say, it said charge, uh, file not found. Okay, let's try again. Maybe I didn't. I don't know. Paste it. It looks the same. Um, but let's let's just try it. Compile. Run. And it's still saying file not found. What's wrong? No such file or directory. Hmm. Okay. Okay, so this is what I think I'm doing. I'm saving. Okay, all right. So let, let, let hold on a second. I think we um, saved it in the wrong location. All right, so I'm saving. I save the. Hold on, hold on a second. I'm saving. I think I'm saving it here. That's 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 what's happening. That's what's happening. I think I kind of let's see. So charge account class charge account. This is the first program. I shouldn't have charge account modification here. So remember when I did the save as, I think I was saving it in a different location. I should save everything here. I should save everything here in charge account modification. Right? That's where I should save everything. And I think for the most part I have it. But when I. So this program is probably not having that accurate stuff. Okay. Um, Let, let's let's basically let's um let's say let's say this again so that because that's what's the problem you can see over here that this is actually saving it in charge the charge account validation folder before and in the charge account validation it's creating another java file so that's where basically basically where our java file is and so that's why and so let's save let's make sure we're saving this in our charge account modification folder directly all right and let's see where this is Charge account modification. Charge account. Okay, so this it looks fine, which is our, which is our class itself. Um, yeah, this is our class itself. It's saved in the right location. Let's see. Yeah, Th this the test program is saving it, saving in the charge account validation, and so that's why you see when we open our charge account modification, it only uh, it's all it only has the charge account um, modification. It, it only has the class, but it doesn't have the test program. And so because we're we are saving the test program in over here in the charge account validation, we don't need that. We need to basically save it here in charge account modification. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to save this as this save this test program file save as programming challenges. Oh yeah, so chapter seven. In charge account modification, I'm going to save it here. The test program here. So save it here. And so now I have it saved in charge account modification, charge account modification test of Java. And I have this also saved in the right location. All right, so now let's go back into charge account. I'm sorry, this is all confusing, but um, I just want to cl clean this up. Now let's go back to the program number three, which, well, sorry, it's just this one. Delete charge account modification test. Delete these three files. Um, yes. And then now we have our original charge account, the Java, and then our charge account test. Okay. And so because the charge account test program was saved here, I couldn't find the file because the file wasn't saved here. The file was saved in charge account modification and so now because we have the charge account modification um, sorry this one because we have the charge account modification test or Java when we compile it let's do that right now then let's, let's compile this and now we're going to have 
all the all the compiled the compiled file in charge account modification you should have more files now yes and we have the text file itself and so now when we try to compile everything should work. we have the charge account modification class and we have the charge account modification test program we were saving it somewhere else and so in that location where we're saving this there was no text file and that's why I couldn't find it find it now there's a text file in the same location and so it should find it if the text file is not in the same location you'd have to specify the path okay to where the file is by the way the text file is so that this test program can see where I can, can work with the file I can see what where the file is and work with the file the text file is and work with the file okay so now I'm going to compile this okay Let's run it again. Okay, so now we, it's not giving us a problem. So remember, we first of all, let's cancel this. We first of all displayed the elements in the array. Now, bear in mind, this is reading from the file. It, it first read from the file, we gave it the file name, and then stored the, each of the, it read from the file, stored each of the lines in the file in, in an array. And so now, th that, that's what we did first. We stored the elements or the lines in the file first in an array to work with. So that's a, that's the goal of this program. Now I canceled it uh, because we don't have anything for the cancel bu the cancel button. So that's why we're seeing this. But um, f for the most for the most part, it's working. So this is the file. We can see everything is working here. Just to just to just to see it, or to test to see we are we are reading from the file, right? Let's just um, enter random numbers. Let's see one, just random numbers, and see what happens. Save this. Compile this. Or we're gonna have to compile. Run this, and we can see the numbers we just typed in the file. You can see it's actually reading from the file. So let's just undo this for a second. Work with these numbers. Cancel this. Compile it. I don't have to actually. You can see it's you know. So we now we can see the reason why I did this just for testing purposes, right? In the rule program, you wouldn't do that. So now we're going to enter a number to see if this number is in any of the any of the numbers from the file. So let's enter first of all this five six. Right, and when we, pa we paste it here and hit OK, now it says the number. This is a valid account number because it's part of the numbers that it read from the file. So bear in mind the program first of all reads all the lines in the file and stores them in an array. Okay, it, it reads from the file first, and that's the goal: read from the file first and store them in an array. Now let's work with the array. But you read from the file. Okay, we didn't have the numbers anywhere. You didn't have these numbers anywhere. In the code, you, we don't have it anywhere in the code. Unlike the unlike the previous program, we had the numbers, but this time around we don't. We don't have the numbers anywhere in the in the in the code. So it's di it's directly reading from the file. So now let's change this to what we had before, which is these numbers. I just did a redo, save it, or I think undo or redo, save this, and then run this again. Oops, I need to compile. Oh, this is the class. Sorry. It's not a complete program, it's just a class. Okay, so run this. And so it's first of all displaying to us the numbers, okay, which is just for us so we can know the numbers and verify. And so when I type in a number like this, 1212, which is a valid account number in the file, hit OK, it says the number 1212 is a valid account number. But when I type in a number that it's not a valid account number, let's say, Something close to one two one two, right? I'm going to type in one two one two one, and there's nothing like one two one two one here. So we should say is not a valid account number. When I hit OK, now it says the number one two one two one is not a valid account number. So this works. Now this is the J option panes system dot exit. Basically, the system dot exit method here is just causing that to, to display. But for the most part, actually, this program works. We've solved it. We read from the file first and stored it in an array. And so. If you have any questions, okay, please comment down below and I'll do everything to respond to them. Um, thank you very much for watching. Uh, take care of yourselves and I'll see you next time with the next program. All right then, bye-bye.